Hi everyone, Vic here from myenglishteacher.eu. Today I'm going to share with you four steps on how to create a formal business email. Okay, step number one is the subject line. The subject line needs to be two things. First, straight to the point. Don't write a subject line that makes them guess, have to guess what's in the email. If you're applying for a job, write down job application, right? If you want to ask them a question about a product, say product inquiry or product question. Easy. But also, step number two, give them a reason to open it. So it has to be, for example, specific and it has to be relevant. So that means that if you write an email applica uh, job application via email, you'll say job application, accountant position, right? So then straight away they'll know if I open this email, I'll find information about somebody who wants to work with us as an accountant. Okay, that gives me a reason to open it, right? Or product inquiry, and then you write down the product perhaps, is they'll know straight away when I open this email, I will get or I'll have a question about this product. So it has to give them a reason to open it and also it has to be straight to the point. Yep. So step number two, step number two is how you start the content of the email. So it's how you introduce yourself. When you're face to face in, an, in a formal setting, you don't say, hi, how are you going? No, you'll say, good afternoon, good evening, something like that. Same goes for an email, except in emails we use the terminology, dear. So you say dear and then their first name. In the past, we used to use their last name. We used to say dear Mr. Smith, dear Mrs. Jenkins. But these days, that creates a distance if you do that with the person that you're sending the email to. So what you want to do instead is use their first name. So you'll say dear John, dear Susan, right? Whatever their first name is. Okay, now that's step number two, is to create the, the correct starting introduction, right? Step number three. Step number three is the actual body or the content of the email. Now the content of the email is broken up or can be broken up into three different sections. First you have the introduction, second you have the actual body, the meat of the email, and the third is the conclusion or action, right? So the way that you do it is the introduction needs to basically tell them what you're going to talk to them about in that email. So what's going to be in the body and what's going to be the conclusion. For example, dear John, then you will say, good afternoon, uh, I would like to apply for the position of English teacher at your school. Then you'll go on to the body, right? The body will be, I have been an English teacher for so many years. I have worked in these different schools. I would really like to work with your company. I have uh, followed you guys on Facebook for years and love everything that you do, blah, 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 right? And then you'll have the conclusion. The conclusion or the action is what you want them to do with this information. For example, you can say, please contact me for available times to set up an interview with you, or please send me further information about the position, or something like that. So you have the introduction, basically telling them what you're going to talk to them about, the body, which is all of the information that you want to share with them, and the conclusion, which is what you want them to do with that information. Okay, so those are the three parts of step three, the body or the content of the email. Now, two tips with the content of a business or formal email is, number one, do not use contractions. Contractions are I'm, where, I'll, we'll, you know, you don't say we'll be, you say we will be. You don't say I'm, you say I am, okay? So don't use contractions in a formal email. The other tip that I want to give you is to make sure that your email is as short as possible. When I say as possible, that means that you have to still provide all the necessary information in that email, but don't write it too long because, as I said, all of us get a lot of business emails every day. So you want to get straight to the point as fast as possible. Now, step four for writing a formal business email is to end it correctly. Now, you don't say bye or see you soon or something like that at the end of a formal business email. You'll say either sincerely, kindly, or kind regards, or regards, something like that, okay? So you can use one of those structured endings. And then you'll finally give them your name, your current position, and other contact information such as a phone number or perhaps a website that they can go to for more information as well. So those are the four steps on creating a formal business email. Step number one, 
make sure you have the right subject line, which is both straight to the point and gives them a reason to open it. Step number two, start your email content properly. You say dear and then first name. Don't use the last name because that's ancient. That's what they used to do in the old days, but not anymore. Step number three, make sure that you have the correct uh, content for the email, that you have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, what you want them to do with that information. Also for the two tips for step number um, three is that you give them the information as short and as brief as possible so that doesn't waste their time. And also that you do not use contractions, so don't use I'm, we're, those kind of things. And step number four, the last one, is to make sure you finish the email correctly. So you say sincerely or kind regards or regards, something like that, with the proper information that they can contact you at the very end. So those are the four steps to create a formal business email. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe now.